Hey guys, I'm here taking a look at Mount and Blade with Fire and Sword. This is the newest game in the Mount and Blade series, which is kind of like... I guess you could call them action RPGs or strategy games, all pretty much consistently set in, like, the old world, like the Middle Ages or uh, from that point onwards. Uh, so here we're just gonna... I'm gonna take you on a brief kind of run through, and I thought about naming my character Northern Line, but during character creation I always like to mix it up a little bit, make my guy sound a little bit cooler. So we're gonna go with my, my favorite trope for naming, like, fantasy characters, which is, like, really mean-sounding thing, and then the... And then a nice sounding title, like Bone Crusher the Benevolent, I think goes really well. And then I'm just putting my points basically into uh, random things here. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with this game, so I don't know the significance of things like upgrading your trainer skill or wound management or uh, you know shooting from horseback, although that sounds pretty goddamn awesome. Uh, but we won't get a chance to see too, too much of that in here. And then I'll just throw a bunch of proficiency points into uh, one-handed weapons, because that's what I'll be using most often here. You can see that the character creation does have uh, a lot of depth to it, and I'm pretty sure if I spend more time on this screen, I can make something that looks, you know, fairly similar to me. We're going to get pretty close, except I'm going to give myself a much, much cooler beard than I can grow. Well, you know, if I gave myself enough time, I could probably come up with that one, but, uh, you know, where am I going to get a hairband at this hour? And then we'll just adjust the, uh, the hair color slider until it looks like my natural Scandinavian blonde. Uh, I'm gonna leave all of the other face stuff the same. Uh, it's not as intuitive, obviously, as creating a me, but, you know, it does the trick. And then we're gonna start basically the in-game tutorial, which is gonna teach us the very, Welcome very basics of the fire game. And sword. This is a short tutorial that will guide you through your that fence is I'm gonna talk over this guy a little bit. Basically, uh, the first thing we learn is that using the left click, you can attack with your sword. And you can do uh, four different attacks by moving your mouse in one direction or another. So by going kind of straight on, uh, I do a stab, but if I swipe it a little bit, then I do more of a cutting motion. And then I can defend by using right click and kind of pointing in the same direction that my attacker is coming from. So in this way, we get some kind of uh, you know, pretty neat sword fighting mechanics that can go on, even though sometimes it looks like a bunch of, you know, ninth grade fencing team rejects trying to fight with swords made out of connects in the high school parking lot. Except for that guy, because now he's dead, or as the game says, he's unconscious anyway. And then we, we start to get introduced to the more party aspect of the game, which we won't really see too much after this because of the uh, relatively concise length of this video. Uh, so we're just going to cut these guys down in their prime. I can basically let my, uh, my party do all the work here if I want to. But, mm, might as well step in on the action myself. I'm not sure if there's any friendly fire. Overall, of uh, the time I've spent with this game so far, I've been really, really enjoying it. So yes, he offers us to join his party. Um, yes, uh, really, really enjoying this so far. It's got a really kind of open world aspect to it. It feels a lot like something, at least in the early stages, it feels like something like Oblivion or Morrowind. But it's not really the same as those. This one takes... Um, I, sh I, I said earlier during character creation that I was creating a fantasy character, but this is historical fantasy, so uh, historical fiction. There is, uh, you know, some basis in the real world for this. Like, we're, uh, we're hanging out in Eastern Europe right now, apparently, and I, my knowledge of European history is not so good, but uh, we're dealing with, like, the, uh, the Poles and the Russians and the... Cossacks right now, and they were on a horse, and I did not mean that to be a reference to the Old Spice commercial, but uh, horse combat makes up maybe the second uh, type of combat that we'll see in this video. You can, you know, ride on a horse, shoot your pistol, which is you know, as archaic as you might expect given the era, and you know, it's something that's, that was said a lot back when uh, every first person shooter that came out was in World War II. People were like, why don't they make a Civil War or a World War I first person shooter? And the answer to the Civil War question is because they did with gods and generals, and it was fucking terrible. Uh, but the the problem that was always brought up with World War One is that no one wants to deal with rifles that you know you fire once and then it takes a minute to reload them. Well, this game does a pretty good job of uh, you know making long reload times, but still it feels like it's moving pretty quickly. So we're gonna ride around here and hopefully get in on a little bit of combat here. I'm gonna try to shoot while riding, but you know my <laughs> my aim combined with the primitive technology of this gun is not so good. So mostly I think I'm just going to run around and do my own thing, let my party take care of things. I mean, look, they're all equipped in, like, helmets and armor and shit. I don't have anything. I don't even have hair on the top of my head. I'm a, I'm a sitting duck out here. Let me get some kind of meaningless story here where he asks us if we want to show up at his house for dinner, and Billy Mays here says, yeah, why not? 
So we have supper with him, and uh, I guess we're having supper just outside under the stars, which I guess actually makes sense considering he's kind of a wanderer. That is a wicked pajama shirt I've got going on there. And right now I'm just asking him some questions, basically saying like, Jacques de Clermont, what's going on out here? Tell me a little bit of the backstory of Mount and Blade of Fire and Sword, but the guy's pretty verbose, so we're just gonna cut it down a little bit. Basically, shit's fucked up, everyone's fighting for power, you start off as a, you know, a lowly no-name, and you can build yourself up to be a, a tyrant or a, a conqueror, a siege artist, if you will. And uh, that, that's the general conceit of the game, as far as I can tell. As you play more and more, you can level up, uh, improve your stats, you can get uh, mercenaries to come along with you, because we're going to leave these guys right now. Um, travel back and forth from different towns, you can do jobs like trading from town to town, you can operate trade routes, uh, you can take on basically like assassination missions, uh, and this is the other screen that we see is like this overworld map that allows us to go from town to town. So we've ridden to the next closest town like uh, Jacques told us to do, and then we're going to just talk to the elder here and he'll be able to set us up with, uh, with a job. And the first job that I did the first time I played through this was uh, I, I took a job smuggling wine, or bringing wine from one place to another, but when I did it, uh, I ran out of money halfway through, so I just took the wine myself and then sold it to a merchant. Uh, and, you know, nothing bad ever came of that because I never went back to that original town. But, uh, this one, he, there's some bandits outside of the town, and he wants me to basically take care of them. And, um, by take care of them, of course, he means slaughter them. And we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna leave the town and then ride over to these bandits that should be just over here. Yes, there they are. Ooh, there's seven of them. This is gonna be, this is gonna be tricky. And I like that when we, there's two sides of the story, is when we talk to him here, my, Bone Crusher the Benevolent is like, you guys seem pretty nice, like, you know, very erudite, very well spoken. You look like pilgrims, one day you'll go on to found the glorious nations of the United States of America, and to a lesser extent Canada. Man, my guy looks like he's got some serious um, upper chest fat, if you know what I'm saying, some deposits of upper chest fat. Alright, but I've engaged them in battle, what should I do? I could leave, it's one versus seven. Uh, or I could charge directly into them. I'm gonna charge into them. One versus seven, that's nothing. Before Xbox Live took it down, I used to regularly take on one versus a hundred. And of course, I'll switch to the, the dramatic Braveheart music here as I ride into what is probably gonna be my inevitable slaughter. I just say the game looks really good. I hope that uh, this doesn't get butchered in quality, quality during rendering and uh, uploading. Uh, game looks really, really good and runs really well. Okay, so there's seven of them and one of me on horseback. I've got a pistol and I've got a sword. Let's see what I can do here. I don't think my pistol's going to be much use, but I'd really like it if I could just, you know, lop a couple shots off with it. Right now I'm riding around in first person mode, but um, if I just press the R key, I can switch to third person mode. And there we go, which is probably going to be a little bit more effective for combat, at least for me at, at my beginning stages here. So my strategy for fighting these guys, since I'm not really adept at the combat yet, is basically, you can sum it up by saying, death by horse. So I'm pretty much just going to charge headlong into them and hope to not take many hits, because um, my guy's still pretty weak, so I'll probably die in uh, you know, maybe two hits. And until then, death by horse, just, just cut him down, and then occasionally I can get in with the sword. But uh, I think I might want to uh, I might want to try out the pistol in a second, because... If I could just get one shot through the heart uh, with me to blame, would probably be good enough to take down at least one of these. Ooh, that was a that was a nasty shot. I'm not sure how much my guy has left in him. All right, let's give this pistol a try. Pistol, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, because of the uh, somewhat antiquated technology, the aiming is not so good. But of course, uh, the more you upgrade your your pistol wielding skill uh, when you when you level up, the better it'll be. Uh, and also, worth noting that I'm shooting while riding a horse right now, which is probably not the easiest thing to do, especially with six other guys shooting at me as I try to take that one guy down. So we'll just go back to our old-fashioned death-by-horse model, uh, model of attack. Seems to be working alright, although it might take me a hundred passes to actually kill these guys. And if I actually get shot one more time, things are going to start to look pretty dire for me. Oh, this guy's going down. <laughs> Got him with the horse raiding the nuts, that old schoolboy prank. Right. I gotta say, my guy does look like a pretty huge boss taking on these seven pilgrims by himself. 
Oh, you know, reload. Oh. Oh, God, my horse. Oh, you can see the axes behind me. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Congratulations, guys. All right, so this has been Mountain Blade uh, of Flame and Smoke. Check it out.